Hey everybody, it's Loomer uh, here at E3 once again, uh, this time talking to Mark Lexicote, or should I call you Mac? Well, call me Mac. Okay, like, yes. Everybody on the team calls me Mac. Yeah, so his initial is obviously Mac. Okay, so uh, creative director on Assassin's Creed Syndicate, so thank you very much for joining me to answer some of these fan questions that we've collected and ranked. I'm going to start off with the top voted question, which I know it will be a little difficult to talk about. This is from Vistas from Berlin, who asks, will we be able to control someone in the modern day part, or will it be a passive experience? Experience like in Unity. So we've got something very cool in store for our players uh, this year in the present day. Unfortunately, I can't just start talking to you about it yet. So uh, stay tuned throughout the summer, and I'm sure you'll be very happy with what you see. Okay, great. So yeah, so unfortunately, we can't talk about modern day now. Uh, I have a question. I don't know if you can answer this or not. Um, you know, a lot of fans were really disappointed in Unity's modern day, like how passive it was, how little actually kind of happened in it. Do you think they will be more satisfied with Syndicate's present day? I think they'll be extremely more satisfied with uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate's present. Absolutely, uh, without a doubt. Okay, great, good. All right, so next question is from Peter Strafford from Northampton, UK. Will the black box mission structure return for the assassinations in Assassin's Creed Syndicate? Absolutely, those black box types of missions are back. They're bigger, better, have more options than ever. Great. That was definitely one of the highlights, I think, of uh, gameplay in Unity. Absolutely, and it's one of the highlights of the game right now. So, like I was mentioning in a bunch of interviews, we're testing the game much earlier uh, than, than, than before, and those are certainly the missions that our players uh, prefer. And again, the way we are trying to do this this year is provide them even more options for, uh, uh, for to attack those black boxes. Okay. Great to hear. Great. Okay, so Michael from San Francisco, we had a couple questions like this, but how is gameplay going to change now that we control two characters? Are we going to have teamwork between Jacob and Evie in real time? So there's no teamwork in real time between Jacob and Evie, but the way it works is that you will play in the open world, you can choose to play as either Jacob or Evie. Uh, it's up to your choice. You can customize Jacob differently than Evie. Uh, they have both their own skill tree, so Jacob is geared a bit toward, uh, more towards fight, and Eevee towards stealth because it reflects more their personality. And then in the main storyline, you can uh, you have some missions as Jacob and some missions as Eevee, and their story really intertwines. So they do collaborate, but their collaboration is through the story. Okay, great. Um, the cliffhangers from Utah asks: Will there be any references to famous English assassins slash Templars seen in previous games, such as the Kenway family or Maria Thorpe? You'll have to wait and see for that. I don't want to give out any spoilers for the story, but you can be sure that we're a brand that really tries to weave everything together. So uh, you'll see. Yeah, OK. <laughs> That's fair. Um, Gokhan Ukar probably butchered it from Turkey asks, can we switch the character in the game when we want, just like in GTA 5? I think you kind of answered this. Yes, absolutely. In, w once you're in free roam in the open world, you can choose to play as either character. But exactly like in GTA, for example, we have missions where you play as Jacob and some missions where you play as Evie. Is it like just from the menu or do you have to go to like a special spot to like swap them out? You can do it from the menu. You can swap it out, yeah. Great, awesome. Okay, um, we're going to skip some of the modern day stuff uh, that obviously we can't talk about. Fly Guy from... Each, oh god, Iktigim, I'm sorry. <laughs> Will the parkour slash puzzle tombs ever return? Like, probably most especially seen in like AC2 and Brotherhood, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, so uh, I don't have anything to say about this uh, at this point. What we're doing in terms of parkour, though, is trying to improve upon what we've done in Unity, make it more fluid, and uh, I hope our fans will love the introduction of the rope launcher. I don't know if you've tried it. I did but, try uh, it. So uh, it makes parkour very much more dynamic. Okay, great. Yeah, you know, I've been a little worried about the rope launcher ever since uh, I heard about it because it looks like you can just kind of bypass all the kind of climbing that's been kind of central to the series. So I was wondering, and when I played the demo, like it feels great to use. I'm just not sure if I feel like it's an Assassin's Creed necessarily, like when you can just go point to point like that. And what happens like with sync points and stuff? Can you just like rope dart up to the top sink and then just drop back down or how? So with sync points, you'll have to be careful because the jet geometry is not just a single thing that you can quickly climb on top of. So uh, you'll have to use it carefully. But one of the great things just to reassure you about parkour is that when you have to stalk your enemies uh, as they move down uh, the streets, so you've got all those big letters on the side of the building. So there's more parkour elements on the facade of buildings than ever before. And are super useful to track down your enemies and run after them. Okay, yeah, and I also noticed when I played that it doesn't replace all parkour, no, just certain absolutely. types, like yeah. going straight up and 
um, like going from building to building maybe, but yep. there's still definitely situations Absolutely. where you need to climb. So yeah. And I'm, that I'm, part I'm, is smoother than ever, so. Okay, great. We actually had a question about parkour from Jaeger Bradley, San Francisco. Woo uh, any Have there been any advances to parkour, new animations slash moves, new tools, new objects? So besides the rope launcher, yeah. any other changes to parkour? So our focus is to make it even more accessible and to make sure that you don't, uh, one of the things that we noticed in Unity last year is that players tend to tack on objects uh, left and right and get diverted from where they want to go. So this is a very, an er a very much an area of focus for us this year to make sure that the experience stays fluid and that you feel in control of your character. Yeah, so you're not accidentally running up like buildings exactly. as you're running down the street or something. Exactly. Okay. Great. Okay, uh, another question from, uh, this is from the Ice Warrior 13 from Northern Ireland. Can Jacob and Evie only wear, can Jacob and Evie only wear assassin hoods when they're in stealth mode or are there other ways to put the hood on when the player so desires? Always a question. The toggleable hood is always comes up like the last few years. So the hood is your feedback that you are in a stealth uh, stance. So when the hood is on, that's because you're in stealth. And when you're not in stealth, you put the, the hat back on. I noticed that's true even in restricted areas. Like in AC4, you would always have the hood on. But I noticed in Syndicate, it's actually like if you're just walking in the unrestricted area, you'll still have your top hat, but you have to be in yeah. stealth mode. Is that right? Yeah, the, yeah absolutely. The feedback. We've really run it to make it clear for players that when they're in stealth, they have the hood on. Okay, I think that's a good feedback to the players, but I also don't think they're going to be satisfied with that. People just want a toggleable hood, but um, maybe something to keep in mind for future yeah, we'll installments. Yeah, okay. we'll have to see. Or patch it. Yeah. <laughs> patch it like AC th uh, games over there. Yeah, I think it's super important when you do a game that you have clear feedbacks yeah. about the state that your character is in. That's what I like so much about the hood. Yeah, yeah, I totally get it from a gameplay yeah. perspective. It's more like the fans are like, I want to be able to toggle the hood. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, let me just skip over some of these. Well, we have an Assassin HQ. In every game, we had a place where the Assassins meet. Do we have a special location in Syndicate, or is it the pub we see in the trailer? This is from Column, the ones who came before in England. Ah, uh, you will have to wait and see for that one as well. I'm sorry, but we'll have more to reveal later on this summer. I have to keep your uh, keep some stuff to reveal to you guys over the summer. Okay, so you're saying there is something to reveal? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. Good. Okay. Now this is a question that I am also very very curious about. This is from Rohit in Beng Bangalore, India. Sorry. Uh, will the ambient soundtracks return in AC4, which was removed in AC Unity and before that AC3, big point of contention, uh, where there were no ambient soundtracks playing while free roaming? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we are trying to do this year is to make the sound and the music come from the world. So a lot of uh, what you'll see is that when you move next to pubs, you'll hear the pub songs and everything. You'll hear people playing violin on the streets. And the, the reason we're trying to do this is to make you feel a different ambience as you move throughout the city. So we, you will not have the same background, uh, the same source music and when you are in Whitechapel than where you're in Westminster. So that it reflects differently this, uh, the, the, the different sounds and the different uh, borough in which you are in. I don't know, Mac. <laughs> Ambient music, it seems like such a simple thing, and it comes yeah, and goes, and the fans always want it back. <laughs> yeah, so, but, uh, but, but it, you'll, you'll have to wait and see in the, in the game for itself, because, again, it's like, it's really important for us that the music comes from, from the world. When you're in the open world, yeah. that you, you hear music coming from a cathedral, so it teases you, for example, to, uh, to go there. So uh, it makes for a much more open experience. So, so, I mean, other games have had like local music nearby. Or does Syndicate have a lot more of it then? Because I wasn't, because I wasn't really happy with the amount of local music in Unity or like, like AC3. Even it was just dead all the time. You know? No, no, it's not. Definitely not dead all the time. No, you're. All right. Okay. Good. 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 Oh, okay. So on that note, um, who is composing the soundtrack for Syndicate? Uh, Assassin's not. Creed Syndicate. Again, that's a nice surprise for uh, for later on. You guys never reveal this. You just let it come out like whenever the, the info just comes out and nobody cares but the fans. <laughs> oh, no, but I think the fans will be really, really pleased when we announce. Uh, okay, all closer, right. But we'll announce him a bit later. All right, I, it, it's been an honor for me to work with him. So uh, you guys. Uh, I'm sure a him, you, you say. Actually, I've heard rumors, and if they are true, I am also extremely pleased. But. All right, you better, don't just let this come out through the Amazon soundtrack or something. Do no, an no, actual no. announcement. <laughs> okay. We'll do an announcement. All right, I think we're running low on time, so we'll just do one more uh, question from Bill from the UK. Has Hidden Blade Combat returned to its dropped in Unity? So Hidden Blades are going to be used for finishers, so they're not, uh, and for your assassination. So they're not, uh, they're not a combat 
they're integrated to the combat flow, but they're not a tool in which you can just block like this, and uh, they're, they're, but they're part of the combat flow. Any quick elaboration on why that decision was made? Well, we really, uh, the Assassin Blade is um, a one-shot kill. Okay, it, it's used to kill. So one of the things we're doing, we're trying to make, have more progression into uh, the combat system so that it becomes more challenging as the game um, as the game goes on. So if we make this kind of the one-shot kill thing, it, it, it's good for finishers and things, but if you would kill everybody, everybody with one shot, there would be no challenge to combat. And if there's no challenge to combat, then there's no reason to do stealth. So, uh, so we really want to reinforce the three pillars of the game and don't have the ultimate tool that allows you to just do anything with no effort. So. Okay. I mean, yeah, I think people just want it back like AC2 Brotherhood, but I, I, I personally get behind the idea where it's like this um, kind of like special thing that's it's used special, for... Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. Like, it's your special yeah. thing that you have to use carefully. And one of the things that I can tell you is that you can, like for example, an Assassin's Creed Syndicate, you can assassinate from the start. So you've got those okay. hidden blades from the start and you can use them and yep. jump on enemies from above. Yep, great. They are born into the Brotherhood, so it makes sense. Okay, so great. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, Mac. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, good luck with hey, the game. <laughs> pleasure was mine, and I hope you enjoy it on October 23rd. Yes, definitely. Okay, so be sure to check out the other interviews on my channel. I'll have links for them in the video description. Also, you can follow Mark on Twitter at Mark Alexi Cote. We'll have a link to that in the video description as Perfect. well. Okay, thank great. you very much. Yep. Thank you. See you guys later.